Is America banning Chinese people from buying homes? Is this right? Is it wrong? What's the real issue here? Yeah, we got to talk about it because this is going viral right now. We're talking about Bill 147 in Texas, Andrew. It just got passed. The details haven't come out yet. Some people are saying it's racist. Some people are in the middle and other people are like, we need to just do this and even more. Man, well, there's a multitude of reactions. We're going to go through and analyze them, respond to some comments, and then give our takeaways at the end, guys. So please hit that like button right now and check out other episodes of the hot pop boys you know what it is from frivolous to serious we're covering it all long story short the bill puts chinese citizens in the same boat as iranian citizens russian citizens and north korean citizens basically not allowing them to buy property in the state of texas yeah so for a while texas and other states have been trying to block chinese companies from buying large plots of land which i have to agree makes sense if they're a chinese company trying to buy a bunch of farm land obviously you probably want your farmland owned by domestic american companies however here's the super controversial part they are now potentially blocking individual chinese people who are not permanent residents from buying property now there's a lot of disputes over this some people who are saying uh, making the bill are like you know we're only going to stop the citizens that have relations to the government mm. but obviously that gets into a gray zone how does one determine whether a regular person that is a non-citizen has relations with the government or not so some people are very worried about where this trend could go being extrapolated andrew you don't think the uh, chinese are like yeah hey guys we're like your number one trading partner how we end up on a list with like iran russia and north korea I, I get it. We're not like best friends right now, but can we get a like second tier? And certainly uh, they, they're got to be first yeah. tier enemy. Yeah, that is a pretty uh, awful list to be on. I <laughs> think that our PR department has made a mistake and uh, we have to relook at our marketing budget because uh, somewhere along the way we have been put on the wrong list. So it's Andrew, it's Colecorst versus Gene Wu, right? So what did Colecorst say? Who I believe, Andrew, that sounds like a, uh, a Czech last name because they eat those uh, kolaches over there in Texas. Uh, well, okay, we can assume about her ethnic background. No, the but. kolaches, I'm telling you. All right, Cole Course is the senator who's pushing the bill through. She is Republican. She did want everybody to know, this is what she said in quotes, I will make it crystal clear that the prohibitions do not apply to United States citizens and lawful permanent residents. So do not worry if you are one of these people, you will still be able to buy land. Right, which does make sense for her to say that. And it does sound logical. However, it does also sound very vague. Yeah, it also sounds vague because like also, what does it mean if she verbally says it? It yeah. really just matters what's in the Senate bill. However, I will say this, David. Senate bills are very, very long and wordy. So there's probably a lot of words, a lot of jargon in there. As a regular person, I don't have a peek yeah, into yeah, it. I'm, I'm going to get in my takeaways, Andrew. I actually think that my final opinion on this actually is all about the details. But moving on, Andrew, what did Gene Wu say? Because Gene Wu was actually part of a protest in Houston, Texas's Chinatown against this bill, yeah, right? Gene Wu is a Democrat, and this is what he said. China is Texas's second largest trading partner, and China is the third largest purchaser of Texas goods. A proposal like this could jeopardize all of those contracts. All right, well, hey. Hey guys, there are probably valid arguments on all sides, right? But let's get into some of the reaction on the internet. Someone said, oh, yeah, so much for capitalism, democracy, and freedom. And someone said, yeah, because in this case, those things aren't in our natural interest. Yeah, and you know what's funny? This is a whole classic money versus military. I'm talking about trade versus geopolitics because, David, basically what you're looking at is uh, still a lot of people in America want to sell things, whether it's land, houses, condos, agricultural land, to Chinese companies because because Chinese companies and Chinese people right. who are different, they're not necessarily the same. They have a lot of money. So of course, this is now the military and the national security is getting in the way of making money. I would say that in any deal, it takes two to tango. And if you're gonna regulate, you gotta regulate or tax both sides. Um, I will say this, you know, it's really interesting to think about do national interests or national freedoms do they trump national interests? And do these national freedoms only extend themselves to full-fledged citizens? Where does it end? Is it green card holders? Is it PRs? You know, who knows, guys? I'm not in politics. I never studied poli-sci. I'm just saying. Moving on, Andrew, someone said, well, you know, China is a hostile country and using all types of means to undermine the U.S. So why don't y'all live with this enemy status it been brought on to you by behaviors, clearly. Yeah, it's kind of like, well, since we've deemed China the enemy, then anything we got to do to the enemy 
should just go. No and, questions and asked. Like, like, the truth is here, guys. If you really know about this thing, it's a frenemy. It's a frenemy situation because both people are making each other rich. Both people are doing a, an immense amount of trades. It is completely different than Iran, Russia, North Korea situation. It is completely right. different, but I get it. Whatever, they put it in the same bucket. Um, Andrew, I would say that this opinion is probably held, to be honest, by a lot of older, you know, I don't want to speculate on how they look, older people in America. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people also uh, are not doing any business, do not benefit from China, do not like Chinese things, obviously. I don't even like chow mein. <laughs> I don't even like Chinese women. There's another comment that goes, most countries on the planet have laws that prevent non-citizens from owning property in their countries. You think you can just go and buy some property in China? Pfft. Yeah, I would say that this is the most valid argument in the sense of obviously China and America, two completely different systems. One country very much in a way not free. America, very free. However, are you basically saying that you're going to apply Chinese rules to Chinese people selectively in America, theoretically could be unconstitutional. No, and also I think uh, it's kind of funny where this comment oftentimes comes from the same people who hate China, who are anti-China, but then they're like, you know what? I'm anti-China, but uh, there are some laws over there that I'd like to implement over here. I kind of like what they do sometimes, but I hate them. But um, Actually, I probably would adopt some of the things. Yeah, uh, they really know what they're doing, but I hate them. Yeah, you should see how they treat criminals and drug dealers over there. Pretty mean yeah. to them. I'll say this. Listen, guys, America absolutely, and Texas in particular, you know how Texas is. They're very like, you know, don't don't mess with Texas, man. I'm telling you, I'll do, no. doggone it. You don't know what I'll do in the Lone Star State. Um, I'll say this. They absolutely have the right to protect themselves, and they have the right to pass any laws, but I do think they also owe it to everybody else, the rest of the country themselves, to be very clear about what they are and they are not doing. And right now, I see a lot of fear-mongering on both sides. Yeah, I mean, I and uh, I, I guess to empathize with Texas for a second, I will say that they are always constantly dealing with also Mexico, who is our neighbor as well, where a lot of other states, we don't have to deal with the border and everything like that. So Texas does kind of have their own number of kind of unique issues and, and topics that they're constantly dealing with. But... Regardless, guys. Uh, anyways, what about well, these other comments, Andrew? People said, I agree with them. If they haven't lived in America for more than 10 years, no companies and no politicians. So some people here are trying to litigate. They're trying to find the details. Like I said, in the law, and the bill, a lot of it is going to come down to the details, right? Yeah. Prove to me that you want to be and live in America before you buy some empty condo in downtown someone, Dallas. Someone said, you know, I'm always checking people's meters, and it's always an empty condo belonging to some guy named Jin Kwon Kong or something like that from China and they never even visited it well uh so previously you know Cole Horst uh the senator had said that this won't affect lawful permanent residents well this is what it takes to become a permanent resident in Texas it requires one year of proven residency that you have to have lived there for one year and then the application process can take anywhere from six to like 24 months so you're looking at potentially two years before you can buy a property as a PR in Texas, right? Yeah. Um, as a Chinese. So I guess that's just a little bit of information. Real quick, we got to get into some final comments here. Someone said, yeah, well, if you're going to ban all the foreigners buying a potentially lucrative real estate, whether used for this purpose, or that purpose, are you going to ban BlackRock? And are you going to ban, ban the Saudis? How come nobody ever said anything about the Saudis? And obviously, Andrew, the truth is there's some very complex relationships involving oil and obviously BlackRock is an American company. Some people yeah. argue that America is a corporatocracy. Yeah, and then uh, this other comment said, well, we should confiscate any land or property owned by foreigners in the U.S. no matter what or when it was acquired. Now, here's what's funny, David. Most of the foreign-owned land in America is not even owned by China, not even close. China only owns 1%. You know who the biggest foreign land owner in America is? Canada. Yeah. Canada. So well, I believe only 3% of America is owned by foreigners t in total. And of that 3%, the largest land holder of that 3% is Canada. Right. I heard even Italy owns more U.S. land than China does. Right. So if you're confiscating also foreign land or land from people, uh, then you're just going back to like whatever people did in yeah. World War II. You're kind way, of are you going to say that it should be all foreigners? Because somebody was arguing that would be a lot less discriminatory, right? If you just said no foreign passport holders or non Green card or right. non PRs can buy land, but then if you stop all foreigners from buying land, are you? Is that going against the American dream? Is that what America stands for? 
Right. Right? So I don't know. Well, someone said Orientals are different, man. (laughs) uh, They like to take over and dominate. I wasn't around for the Genghis Khan days, but I'm telling you, it probably wasn't good to be us. And not only that, look at Toyota, man. Everybody's driving a Toyota now. Nobody wants a Ford Taurus, Ford Fusion, man. Everybody wants the Japanese cars. Man, uh, anyways, guys, I mean, I think that there's so many comments. David, wait, oh, there's a, a couple well, other. There is a last one. I got to say this, and this is proving my point, and this actually leads me into my transition point, is that some people were like, yeah, man, see, the whites that all the Asians voted for, they were actually against us this whole time and against you guys, so join the NAACP. And another person said, yeah, DeSantis is just putting on a show for the gullible GOP. Basically, there's a lot of people sort of twisting this on both sides to sort of benefit their agenda, right? Um, There's a lot of fear-mongering of China on both sides, right? But particularly on the right, it's more heavy. But on the left, always, of course, basically saying that white people or Republicans are racist is also a classical argument. So the Dems are trying to demonize this and the Republicans are trying to make the case and say that this is for national security and it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I would actually say that uh, in Texas... Even a lot of Democrats low-key support it too, though. Right, right. I guess uh, I guess overall the takeaways, guys, and it's tough without having read the Senate bill and knowing the exact language. Obviously, there's a lot of confusion between who is going to be included in this. I get it. Again, Chinese companies and government entities or anything tied to the Chinese government buying property, you should block it. That's totally fair. Yeah, especially but- when it is involving infrastructure, exactly. military sites. Totally logical. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, but then how do you determine if an individual who is a Chinese national uh, and a citizen of China cannot buy property? I guess right. if you just have to make sure that they're a permanent resident. I guess there's a sense from Americans that are just like, listen, man, if they want to buy land here, they just got to prove that they actually live here, man. That's all we're asking. Right. Is that unreasonable? And is to it? be fair, Andrew, Canada, starting January 1st, 2023 of this year, they have a three-year ban on all foreign citizens, regardless of country of origin, buying Canadian residential homes. Ooh. Because the homes in Canada are, like, soaring way out of control due to, you know, they had laxer, I guess, foreign investment on residential property laws, and then just, like, their market went insane. Another point that I want to bring up, guys, this is the classic, like, American military geopolitics national security Uh, issue butting heads with American capitalism because you know what happened in North Dakota so in North Dakota a uh, big Chinese company was buying a corn mill and they were going to rehab this corn mill as in like spruce it up again and get it up and working yeah it was like running very old school technology we have all the modern corn technology from China we love corn yeah and then the local North Dakota officials were like oh this is great Oh, oh, yeah, I like, or no, sorry, that's not Swedish, but they're like the Fargo talking people, where basically- Oh, yeah, don't you know, yeah. the Chinese are going to come in and make the corn factory. They're like, we oh, better. it's great, yeah, the corn mill's going to get up and running, going to create some jobs and bring back the economies. But then the military blocked this whole project because they were like, whoa, 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 this is a little bit too close to the Air Force, guys. So- It's kind of like businesses want to work with China because ultimately businesses make money, but then the military and- Well, they want to tango. Yeah. And it takes two to tango. And And they they want to tango. They want to dance, but then the American military is trying to cock block it and be like, guys, this is a national security threat. So I guess to you guys in the comments down below, I want to know which one- do you think is a bigger deal? Is it more so that we need to just pursue American business and American capitalism as much as possible? Or do we need to reel it back and say, hey man, listen, we're in a tug of war with China. They might be our friend of me, but keyword enemy and friend of me and then like we got to slow them down right absolutely guys i like i said i think there's a lot of good arguments on both sides when it comes to my opinion on this issue i totally think it is within uh texas state rights to do this Mm -hmm. if they feel like you know whether it's being fear-mongered on the right or fear-mongered on the left as long as the bill includes a lot of provisions for people who like are not doing bad things at all to buy land i think that Uh By all means, I mean, that's Texas. What about this as a compromise? You let them buy land and property, but up to a certain point. Like if they're Chinese citizens, maybe they can buy up to two, three million dollars worth of property. I don't know what the limit is. Maybe one residential home, two residential homes, maybe even three. Right. But But don't let them buy 300. Yeah. That, That could make logical sense and be more of a compromise rather than demonizing a group. Right. Well, anyways, guys, you let us know in the comments down below. Those are our thoughts on this uh, 
Texas Senate Bill 147. Again, I mean- We are not political science majors. Yeah, if you guys know what's really in the bill, please feel free to post it in the comments in quotations. But other than that, obviously there's a lot of confusion about the wording and both sides are trying to use it. I just think both sides right now, they're always like twisting the truth, right? And and they both- want to jujitsu something to benefit their other agendas and wrap it all up when, you know, the issue could just be straight down the middle, more scientific. Who knows, man? Nothing works that way nowadays. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.